The information and views expressed by our host or guests on the Unlock Potential podcast are their own, and not a substitute for professional medical or fitness advice. Always consult with qualified healthcare or fitness professionals before starting any new exercise program or making changes to your current routine. Even at 90 plus years old, you can maintain your fitness level in a healthy way and get closer to your genetic potential. And you can push yourself to your genetic potential and ride that edge of capability for a long way. But it is really important to measure your daily rhythms, to measure your lunar or monthly rhythms, to measure your seasonal and quarterly rhythms, and to measure your annual and yearly rhythms the right way so that you can ensure that you're making the right kind of progress to match your goals. Hello and welcome to season two of Unlock Potential. I'm Brian Delaney. Our focus this season is fitness. I'll be joined by Dr. Corey Duvall, who's going to guide us through his protocol for getting into your best shape so we can live our best lives and serve others well. Welcome back to season two of Unlock Potential. This is episode 13, and I am Dr. Corey Duvall, taking us through the stay active method for how we build our bodies up to be the physically fittest humans we can be so that we are maximally helpful to others. Today, we're gonna to be discussing solar cycles, lunar cycles, seasonal cycles and annual cycles, also understood as daily, monthly, quarterly and yearly rhythms so that we can appropriately track our progress over time not getting too excited or too down on ourselves based on highs and lows. We've talked in recent episodes about a natural rhythm of stress hormone and recovery hormone through a day's cycle. Right here is when we wake up in the morning and we've got a rising amount of activity and we have a rising amount of stress hormone. As we are productive throughout the day and tip into the afternoon, those start to drop off and then we descend into a more restful state through the rest of the day into the evening. As we reach towards the bottom, we fall into sleep. And as we start to rise out of sleep, stress hormones and activity start to rise again and we hit the next day, similar to how we started the day prior. Now, various aspects can influence our daily rhythm. And it's important to understand how our body is influenced in those daily rhythms to try to get ourselves back to an appropriate rhythm to make good long-term progress. Now, as we're going through this day, I wouldn't want to compare my productivity in the middle of the morning to my productivity in the middle of the nighttime. So I wouldn't say, hey, look at how capable I am and now I'm less capable. What I would say is I'm more outwardly productive and down here I'm more inwardly productive. And it's important to understand that progress because as we go through lunar seasonal and annual cycles, a similar pattern starts to emerge. So we have a rise through the afternoon and we'll start to descend as we go into the evening time. And a very common habit is that somebody will start to think, ooh, I'm being less productive. I need to get an extra cup of coffee to wake myself up in order to get more productivity done today. So they had a natural day here and then they rise here they reach that peak, it starts to fall, they get that second cup of coffee. And what that does is that reduces their descent. So they don't descend as deeply into sleep that day before their body starts to cycle back up here. Now they might say, oh, I was more productive this day than this day, but they were more outwardly productive and they were less inwardly productive here. And so when you start to do things to stimulate yourself to get more done in a given day, you have to know that eventually 
that means you have less inward productivity. Now, what that's going to result in is we'll have other days that have to counterbalance that by being less outwardly productive and more inwardly productive. And so they won't get as much done in order to balance out the extra that they did here. And they'll be lower for a longer period of time, more sleepy, tougher time waking up, tougher time getting out of bed, tougher time being productive before they start to descend again. Now, if they get to this day and they say, ooh, time to get that extra cup of coffee. And then hold themselves elevated because of that extra cup of coffee, what you can see is that their curve actually starts to flatten out. They're not as stimulated and not as productive during the day, and they're not as easily able to descend into their rest in the afternoon and evening. And over time, instead of having big highs and lows, they have very small highs and lows. And it may even start to reverse. So they are more awake during the night and less awake during the day. The most productive we can be for the longest period of time is to follow this natural rhythm and not try to squeeze extra out of our days in the long run. Now, if I have a situation where I'm finding that I'm flattening out that curve, I'm not as productive and not as restful as I used to be, and I want to start to normalize that, it's not easy to just turn a switch and fall asleep, but you can rev yourself up easier. And so what that means is when you wake up in the morning and you have a tough time waking up, engaging in exercise on those days is more productive in the morning. It stimulates that rise. So instead of a groggy morning waiting for yourself to wake up, you have an alarm set and you get yourself up. And instead of having a groggy day and then not really sleeping well that night, because you got that exercise done, you end up resting a little bit more that next day. And because you rested a little bit more, it's easier to create that momentum to wake up the next day. You show up and get the exercise done. You allow yourself to descend and it gets easier and easier to get back on that rhythm. So avoiding descent through afternoon energy boosts will eventually catch up to you. That catch up means you won't even sleep as well and you'll be become less productive overall. And so the restart to that whole process is to set an alarm, to get up in the morning and to start getting physically active with some exercise, which will restart that cycle and that curve. Now we're gonna take a look at our lunar or monthly cycles here, which is gonna start to show some differences between men and women. We'll get to that in just one moment. If you're tired of feeling low on energy and settling for the scraps, it's time for your personal revolution. We are helping people go from the person that they have been to the person they were truly meant to be and helping people get to the next level in their life, their business, and their relationships. Follow us. So we just discussed the solar or daily rhythm because there's a rise and fall of the sun each day. Sunrise, sunset, sunrise, and sunset. Now we're gonna talk about the lunar rhythm, which is an increase to a full moon and a decrease to a new moon that happens over about a four week cycle. Now this very closely mimics female menstrual cycles because female hormones will fluctuate over about a four week period where men's hormonal cycles will tend to stay more in that daily rhythm. We're gonna talk now about those differences 
because the differences are important for how men measure their progress and how women can measure their progress. <clears throat> so we can see here that daily rhythm over the first week, the second week, the third week, and the fourth week, typically that rise and fall for male hormones is about the same. So if we're matching that rhythm on a steady, consistent basis, we can measure just about any day to another day to keep track of our progress. Women, on the other hand, have a follicular phase and a luteal phase in their menstrual cycle. They will have a couple of weeks where they have more outgoing energy and they will have a couple of weeks where they have more ingoing energy. And so during that follicular phase with that more outgoing energy, they might see more physical performances. They might see more socially interactive performances and they'll just generally have a more positive uh, effort and affect. Now, as they descend into that more inward going energy, they will naturally have a little less physical performance capability. That is a natural part of their rhythm that should be accepted and allowed in order for their natural cycle to occur. They are taking energy here in order to start to proliferate their uterus to support an embryo and potentially give birth to a child down the future. However, in the luteal phase, they prepare for that if there was an implantation, and if there wasn't, they go ahead and use the energy to release that before they start a rebuilding process again. And so accepting that descent because their body is undergoing intense physical change is necessary for their progress. And so if we take a female and we measure her performance during the follicular phase and then measure the performance during the luteal phase and we expect it to be the same, we'll start to feel like a failure because it's naturally a little bit lower. And so if we try to fight that, and if you remember in some previous episodes, we try to ignore that natural descent and we start to try to create artificial boosts of upward performance, over time, her body is going to fight back harder and harder with stronger and stronger symptoms known as PMS. And so we need to allow that natural rise and fall every few weeks in her cycle in order to appropriately track progress month after month after month. Next, we're gonna shift to quarterly or seasonal, and then eventually annual or yearly progress in order to really look at what is the long-term development plan for us. Check out the official Unlock Potential store where inspiration meets style. Explore our exclusive collection of gear inspired by the transformational messages straight from our Unlock Potential podcast. From trendy apparel that embraces the power of positivity to accessories that fuel your motivation. We've got something for every go-getter. Spread the messages of empowerment, energy, and motivation that you get from the Unlock Potential podcast by grabbing your gear today. So now we're gonna take a look at seasonal changes that will affect our body's natural rhythms to make sure we're tracking our long-term progress appropriately. With the rise and fall of the sun in a daily rhythm, we have a rise and fall of our stress hormone naturally and a rise and fall of our outward going and inward going energy. In the springtime, we're coming out of winter and winter, depending on where you are in the world, generally means that there is less duration of the sun showing where you are. And so 
as we go into the spring, we're starting to get more and more sunlight each day. And so we will start to see a little rise in our outward going energy as springtime comes. As we transition into summer, we get more and more sunlight on a regular basis, bringing us to the peak of our outward going energy. And because the sun is there for so long, we actually get less and less inward going energy during that time period. So we can naturally sleep a little less during summertime because the sun rises sooner and sets later. So the spring into the summer shows an increase in outward going energy. And then as we start to transition into fall, the sun starts to show itself a little less and we will descend away from that outward going energy and increase our inward going energy until we get into the winter where we will generally be more restful and deeper into sleep on a regular basis with less outgoing energy following the less light exposure that we have. And as we transition into the next spring, we get a natural rise once again. Now it's really important that we are measuring our progress, not comparing spring, fall, or winter to summer. Because if I look at where I am here, <clears throat> and I say, boy, I have so much outward going energy, and then I compare myself to the winter where I have less, I might feel like I lost progress. Or if I try to fight that by getting myself to be more productive in the winter hours, in the winter days, in the winter months, I'm going to eventually not have as much productivity that next summer. And that limitation of the natural curve, just like we saw in the solar daily rhythm, will start to flatten itself out and become less productive overall. And so we wanna be comparing our outputs summer over summer, fall compared to fall, spring compared to spring and winter compared to winter. This way we have our natural rise and fall and we get to see our progress appropriately. So we take a look at summer and we say, okay, here's my output in this summer. Next summer, compare your output again. The summer after that, compare that output again, measuring each of those against each other as opposed to expecting a three month plan to always show absolute positive increase. Next, we're gonna take a look at comparing yearly progress and what that looks like year after year in a natural cascade of the aging process. Hey everybody, Brian Delaney here. I hope you've been enjoying our second season of Unlock Potential as Corey and I break open some great fitness advice as well as just other life advice that we know is gonna help you and add a ton of value. If you're just a casual listener, soak up the content we're bringing you. It's exceptionally valuable content at no cost to you. But if you're like me and you're like, I want the next levels, I want more information, I want more in depth, I want the extra content, come join us as one of our Patreon subscribers. Support the channel, get to the next level and unlock your potential. Now we understand that there's a natural rise and fall of stress hormone and of sunlight on a daily rhythm. There are some differences that happen week after week in a monthly rhythm between males and females. We understand that the rise and fall of sunlight through the seasons will play a role in our outward going energy. Now we're gonna take a look at what long-term progress looks like over a yearly basis and compare that to our genetic potential so that we can really understand what progress looks like. I've got listed down here, zero to 20 years old, 20 to 35 years old, 35 to 50 years old, and 50 to 90 plus years old. This black line here 
represents the genetic potential, the absolute limit of any particular human and their physical capacity to be most helpful to others. You can see that between zero and 20 years old, it rises steeply. You go from unable to hold yourself up or feed yourself to very capable of helping most of those around you because you are so physically capable. At about 35 years old, the actual physical capacity for that does have a gentle downward slope, which means the actual physical output may go down. Now, what we understand is that wisdom or the ability to take your physical activity and more, be more specific and more productive with it continues to rise and so your actual helpfulness can rise if you've learned the appropriate lessons through that journey. The red line here represents maybe like an average American human as they rose in their ability from zero to 20, as they got into a career, they had some highs and lows in their ability. And I will often start work, working with clients somewhere between 30 and 50 years old. And so my expertise is about what this process looks like for people, though I have had a lot of experience in this range as well as this range. So they may have had a rise through college, gotten a career and had some highs and lows, and now they're ready to really take their physical capability seriously. Well, when they're ready to take their physical capability seriously, they might see a few years of an actual physical performance increase. The weights that they can move at their absolute limit go up. The ease at which they can move lower weights can actually increase as well. The way that they have physical control of their body improves, meaning that they get closer and closer to their genetic potential and they see an actual increase. Then, as they get closer to their genetic potential, they may see an actual physical performance decline. Now, it's important for these individuals to realize that they are maintaining a really great level of physical fitness, even though it's going down, and that's because they're right at their genetic potential. If they see this decline and start to fight it to force it to go higher, they reach into burnout and actually end up falling off even farther. They resist and try to get even more progress damaging joints further and requiring surgery, damaging their immune system further and ending up with cancers and autoimmune disorders. And so when you get close to your genetic potential, it's important to accept that and to stay right with it, but feel that edge appropriately. Other people might say, hey, I've got to take some time and get my physical body right and stop the decline that I started to see from 20 to 35. And what they do is they look at just maintaining that physical output over time. They don't necessarily push themselves to the point where they increase their physical output, but they maintain it for a long period of time. If you compare that their genetic potential is dropping and they're holding steady, that means that they're actually getting physically fitter over time because they're getting closer to their genetic potential. And so this is another version of progress that's just not as intense as this first version of progress. Others may just let go of their physical fitness altogether, feeling like a victim, ignoring so many of their symptoms and not taking on that educational process listening to those who say, it's not your fault, this is just the natural state of things for them to decline. And what ends up happening is their physical fitness just continues to descend while they become more and more dependent on others. 
Now, I have seen people through this phase end up with cancers, strokes, heart disease, all kinds of really traumatic medical incidents. But I have seen people who at 90 plus years old recovered from a stroke and started to engage in their own physical activity. And for a few years, following this decay, this descent, they improved their physical output for those few years. They became less dependent on others. And that's because they stopped ignoring all of those symptoms, started listening to those symptoms, and expecting more out of their physical body. So you can make progress even at 90 plus years old. You can maintain your fitness level in a healthy way and get closer to your genetic potential. And you can push yourself to your genetic potential and ride that edge of capability for a long way. But it is really important to measure your daily rhythms, to measure your lunar or monthly rhythms, to measure your seasonal and quarterly rhythms, and to measure your annual and yearly rhythms the right way so that you can ensure that you're making the right kind of progress to match your goals. I appreciate you following us on this journey today, and I'm really excited about you taking on more physical exercise to build your body to be the fittest human you can be so that you are of greatest service to others. If this episode resonated for you, please like and subscribe and follow us on Patreon for some deeper dives where Brian and I swing into action to really look for what are the nuances and the extra pieces that we can help explain this better. Join us on Patreon for an exclusive discussion with Corey about the content in this episode. Here's a sneak peek. Getting out of that trap of how can this one decision be so impactful when I have a long history of making decisions that I knew were wrong, but I betrayed what I knew. And now I'm just waking up in this moment, but I feel powerless. We talk, uh, going back to the empowered and victim mindset. So how, what would you encourage someone to do to not allow that moment of clarity to become just another moment where they give up on the opportunity that, that, that they're getting signaled to take? Great question. The way the brain works is that a nerve that fires together, wires together. Mm -hmm. And so if you create a habit of eating four bowls of ice cream, and acknowledging after that fourth bowl, ooh, I don't need that, and then decide not to get the fifth. Right in that moment, mm -hmm. you are firing the memory that when you're eating that ice cream that your body does not need anymore, you're remembering that you don't need it. Mm -hmm. And the way that fires is that three and a half bowls in, the next time you're eating, you might acknowledge, oh, such a fat piece of shit. I don't need this. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't need this. I'm going to set this down. Mm -hmm. And if we calm and slow our breath, mm -hmm. we're creating that wired effect over and over and over. And habits do not form by creating instantaneous perfection. Habits form by gradually shifting that track over and over and over again. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Unlock Potential. For exclusive content, make sure to subscribe to our Patreon. Follow us across all socials at The Brian Delaney and visit our website at thebriandelaney.com to shop our gear and see what's coming up next.